Hey everyone, welcome back to the Web Dead Junkie video. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to host your own React application on Amazon's CloudFront. So if you don't know what CloudFront is, it's basically an Amazon service where you can have your static files distributed across the globe to really reduce the latency and load time of your UI. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to set up a domain. So in this case, we have the webdevjunkie.com and I have a React application built and deployed to an S3 bucket, which is holding all of these files, which is hosted in front of CloudFront. And then also I'm gonna show you how to set up a certificate for that custom domain, and also how to create some C name records to point your domain to CloudFront. So if that's something that you find interesting and you wanted to learn more about how to host your own application for cheap on Amazon, be sure to follow along. All right, so the first thing that we are gonna do in this tutorial is create an S3 bucket. This is basically where we're gonna upload all of our files that um, kind of contain our website. In our case, we have a React application that I've built and I have all the files I wanna kind of upload to this bucket. So let's click on the create bucket button. And the main thing that you need to do is you need to name your bucket. And more specifically, your bucket name needs to match your domain, okay? So we plan to host this website on the web devjunkie.com. So make sure that you name it whatever domain you plan to use. So going down here, I'm gonna keep all of the default configuration um, just as it is, and I'm gonna click on this create bucket button. Now our bucket is created, we can kind of dive into it. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload all the files from our React application. Just to kind of show you that, I have a React application here. I went ahead and ran npm run build and that generates a build folder that has all of the React code. Uh, but the same principle applies to if you're using like Svelte or Vue or any other type of website. So you can either click on the upload button to basically individually select the files that you wanna upload. But what I like to do is just go to the folder or file that I wanna upload, which is this build folder here, and just copy and paste this right into my UI, right into Chrome. And I'm gonna go ahead and just upload those files. So now that is done uploading, we can go ahead and go back and just verify that the files are there. So they're all good. Um, and now at this point, what we can do is we can actually go over to another service called CloudFront. So CloudFront is an Amazon service that basically can take your static website assets and distribute it across the globe to kind of reduce the latency that it takes for different people to access your files, okay? So, so what you typically do is you make a distribution and you point it to your bucket and that'll kind of read the files, cache them and distribute them across the globe when people try to access your domain. So let's just go ahead and click on create distribution. This one is another wizard that you kind of have to walk through. Uh, luckily, you can click on the origin domain. Again, this is like where the files are gonna be loaded from. So in this case, we're gonna select the bucket that we just created. And then when someone accesses your CloudFront distribution, it's gonna fetch those files, cache them for a long time, and then distribute them across the globe to reduce the latency that it takes to load your files. Um, now, let's just go ahead and say, yes, we want to use OAI. There's two options. You can make your S3 bucket public and like host a static website with that bucket. Or if you wanna be more secure, you can keep that bucket private so that you can't have any type of HTTP access to the bucket and only HTTPS. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say yes to this. And we're gonna say create a new OAI. Let's go ahead and name it the default. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm gonna say yes, update the bucket policy. What this configuration does is it basically goes to our bucket that we created and it's going to go into the permissions and update the policies down here, okay? So this will allow CloudFront to basically read from this bucket to get the files. Otherwise, you're gonna have permission errors if you don't say yes. You'd have to go and manually do that, which it's not too hard to do, but you just need to know how to correctly set up those policies. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll get to a part that's going to talk about certificates. So you want to actually provide a certificate and you want to also provide an alternate domain name, okay? so. When you first create a CloudFront distribution, it's gonna give you a, a domain that you can actually access your website on, but it's not gonna be a pretty domain. It's gonna have a bunch of like auto-generated um, characters on it and stuff like that. So we're gonna say add an additional domain name. You know, we're gonna say the webdevjunkie.com. And then we also need to create a certificate for that. So if I go to another service called Certificate Manager or ACM, this service allows you to create certificates. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this request a certificate button, and I'm gonna say, give me a public certificate. Now kind of walk through these steps. You need to put in your domain here. So I'm gonna say the webdevjunkie.com, and I'm gonna click next. So at this point, you have two options. You have DNS validation, email validation. What this is doing is basically, Amazon wants to check to make sure that you actually own that domain, okay? This is just to prevent 
any type of issues with security on your domain. So I'm gonna say DNS validation, click next, go ahead and click review. And then at this point, you've got a review page. I'm gonna say confirm and request. So after you do this, you need to go into whatever website or service you have your domain on. In this case, I have mine at Namecheap. I think it's called Namecheap. Yeah, I have mine at Namecheap. So they're gonna give you a record that you need to add to your DNS configuration. So what I'm gonna do is copy um, from here to that. I'm just gonna copy that first part of it. And inside of Namecheap, I'm gonna go ahead and just go down to add another record. And we wanna add a CNAME record. I'm gonna put that thing I copied into the host. And then if I go back, there should be a target that they tell you to point to. So go ahead and copy this whole target and also put that in there. Now at this point, you can click the check button. Um, this might be different depending on where your domain is hosted or where you bought your domain from, but I'm assuming that the steps are very similar. So at this point, you can click continue and you'll see pending validation until Amazon has successfully validated your certificate. So sometimes you just have to sit here for a little bit and then refresh. Uh, if it sits here for a while, it probably means that you did not set it up correctly. So in our case, I think, oh, there we go. All right, so there it went to issued. Everything is set up. The certificate can be used in CloudFront now. So let's go back to the CloudFront setup and I'm gonna click this refresh button here and now I should be able to access that certificate. You see the webdevjunkie.com here, click on that. And now we have the certificate that we can set up on our CloudFront distribution. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create distribution. This might take a little while. It might take a minute or two. You'll see down here where it says deploying. Whenever it's deploying, don't expect your changes to show up on your website until it's done. And I wanna kinda of go back to the bucket and show you, remember I told you there's an option to automatically update the policies? Well, in this case, we said yes to that. And if you go to the policy, you see that a policy is attached to your bucket that says, give the um, CloudFront distribution access to get objects from this bucket, okay? So it's just like a little important piece of configuration. But notice that this bucket is private, so no one can actually access the individual files in this bucket other than CloudFront. Another thing I'm gonna do while this is deploying is there is typically a distributed or distribution domain name that you can copy. So I'm gonna click on this button and I'm actually gonna set up another CNAME record in my Namecheap dashboard. And I'm gonna say add another CNAME and I'm gonna say host is this. Actually no, target needs to be this. Let me go ahead and get rid of that um, HTTPS. And the host needs to be, uh, I think you can keep it like at, or maybe www, it really depends. I think since I'm doing a top level domain, I can just do the at symbol. I haven't used Namecheap in a while, but I'm pretty sure that's how you do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the checkbox. And that is going to point the webdevjunkie.com to this CloudFront distribution. So now all right, it's still deploying, but let's just see if we can actually access that yet. Okay, so it looks like it did actually try to access the bucket, but you'll notice that we got an error back. Now the issue is because we have we do have files in that bucket, but the issue is that it's expecting us to load those files with the exact name. So if I actually do slash index.html, you can see that it actually loaded our application. So in order to fix that issue, what we need to do is go back to CloudFront and we need to go to error pages. So on the error pages tab, you can say create a custom error response. And you basically want to say whenever you get a 403 forbidden, I think it's 404 if you're doing like a public accessible S3 bucket. But since we did a private bucket, you need to do 403 forbidden. I'm going to set the cache to zero and I'm going to say custom error response is true. Hopefully my head wasn't hiding any of that. And let's just do that again. So 403 forbidden, zero for the cache. And then for the custom response error, you're going to say index.html. I think I'm going to prefix that with a slash. And I'm going to say 200. So what this allows you to do is basically if someone hits a URL or domain that doesn't exist in your S3 bucket, it's going to redirect you back to the index and then your app is going to work just perfectly. So let's, um, I think when you make that change, you do have to wait for it to redeploy. So we might have to wait a minute or two before we can actually verify this is working. So let's just go ahead and just keep refreshing and hopefully at some point, if the app loads, we're good. I think this also handles sub routes. So like if I did like Pokemon Pikachu, our React router would actually see that change and you saw that it loaded up Pikachu here. So I'm actually glad that worked. I think this app had some issues before, but it's working pretty good. The last thing I wanna kind of point out is 
This is over HTTPS, so the connection is secure. You can see that up here, it says connection is secure, and it has a certificate, so everything is good. One thing I do want to talk about is invalidations. So sometimes when you update your S3 bucket, like you need to publish a new version of your files or new version of your React application, remember CloudFront caches all your files, right? So it's gonna take users uh, a while before they see the new versions kind of load in their browser. So sometimes you want to go in here and create a custom invalidation where you can basically, I don't remember what the um, example is, but I think you just do like a star here. You can say create invalidation and that is going to clear the cache in CloudFront so that people can see the latest and greatest version of your application. But most of the times when you're using like React or Svelte or something, when you build your production like UI, they are just jittering some type of random number so that it's going to not be cached inside of anywhere. It's not gonna be cached in the browser or in CloudFront. So usually you don't need to do invalidations when you publish a new version of your React application. But the one instance would be like, if you made changes to this index.html file, that is probably gonna be cached in CloudFront and you probably need to go and invalidate it. So just keep that in mind because you can kind of waste time just figuring out why your files are not propagating. But yeah, that's basically it. If you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment below if you have another way you like to host your applications. I believe this is a pretty cheap or free um, way to do it when you have very low traffic. Uh, don't quote me on that. You might wanna check the pricing, but I think it's it's pretty cheap. And then like always, be sure to subscribe if you're new to this channel because I'm gonna be publishing other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer and a better DevOps engineer. Happy coding.